approved. Okay. Yes, Mary Jo, go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you if you might just chat a little bit maybe about the um, marrow points and in relation to uh, like what what symptoms maybe would um, patients appear with, you know, if you were to use or needed to use the marrow points. Okay. So, okay, so let's do the points and then, then let's look at symptoms. So, um, you have um, do 16. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to sound a little odd. You basically got pretty much anything on the scalp. That's, I'll, I'll specify that in a second. <laughs> so, so. Um, I think it's chapter 33 of the Ling Shu talks about the four, the, the four oceans and it prescribes points for each ocean. And the point that it prescribes for the ocean of marrow is do 16 by name, Feng Fu. But then it says on the uh, cap of the head. So a lot of people will say that's do 16. I'm mean, sorry, do 20. But it doesn't say the top of that plus do 20 has a very clear name. Why, why would they, you know, so they're, they're kind of suggesting that there is some sort of cap. Um, that that's um, so, so it, it's to the side. So now the question is where about, first of all, how far from say the center, let's say the center is do 20. Most people will say the center is do 20. So how big is this cap? And the edge of the cap, is it in the front? Is it in the side? Is it in the back? Is it diagonal? I mean, how do we know where this cap is? So in my, so often what I would do is I, I, I just look. And so it can be like stomach eight, for example, it can do, it can be do 24. It can be, it can be different options. And it can be also sometimes I'll take, no, it's not going to be like um, towards the oxford. It's going to be at the top. OK, so if you get getting too close to the ears, you're not probably not so called in marrow. So, for example, when gallbladder 15, 16, 17 became popular, you know, for um, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, you know, for fear and perceptions of pain and stuff, that to me is also part of marrow. OK, you can argue yes, no or whatever. But, you know, so I'm saying that for me, it's it's the whole area. And sometimes what I'll do is on the back, what I'll do is I'll take someone they're lying face down. I'll take I'll imagine stomach eight being on the back of the head. In other words, I put their nose on the back and I, I give them a stomach eight um, because I don't have an ability to get around to stomach. Eight. And that tends to work fairly well for certain for certain people with spinal issues. OK. Um, another big, so obviously gallbladder 39, you can consider to be a marrow point because it is supposed to be the meeting point of marrow. Okay. And the last, the, well, not the last one, the other one is, uh, REN 12. And that can include REN 10 as well as 13. So this whole area. Um, and the last one is, and I'm, I'm going to say that with some trepidation, um, well, not trepidation, but, but with some um, disclaiming, to some extent, you can say large intestine 16. Okay. And that actually comes from someone, some Vietnamese guy who claims that it says so in the Ling Shu, and it clearly does not say so in the Ling Shu. So then I went and checked it out, and I'm kind of like, I want to know what the hell, why, why would he say that? And the thing is, the point itself is called a gigantic bone. Um, Jugu. So you think if a bone is going to be gigantic, okay, then it should have a lot of marrow in it. <laughs> so I, I, I'm kind of now. I would say this: the largeness 16 is a fairly decent point for specifically low back pain, spinal oriented, as opposed to mus muscularly oriented, um, but not necessarily for the other issues that you can have, say are. Um, are marrow. So what what is marrow? I mean, what 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 are symptoms of marrow? So so okay, if you go back to chapter thirty three of the Ling Shu, where where the two first two points come from, I think it says something. I I'd have to look at it, you know. But 
I can't remember the deficiency symptoms. I can look it up in a second. Uh, and, you know, I have it somewhere, you know, readily available. I can look it up. But the excess symptoms are you have, lot, you have strength and lots of capacity. And you have ease, strength, and lots of capacity. In other words, ease, ching, is, is like you, you're light, easeful. Okay, but you have a lot of strength, and you, your your capacity exceeds um, the the normalcy. Okay, in other words, it suggests that marrow is something that's important for for a smooth, um, consistent function of the body, if that makes sense. Okay, because you have ease, you have everything that you want, you know, to to be healthy. So so it's so. It's not as if I can say marrow is exactly 100% related to the autonomic nervous system because it isn't, but it has a relationship to the nervous system. Now, you can also say that the marrow, if the marrow is this thing, we say the marrow is this, it's on the one hand, it's, in, it's the thing that's inside the bones, but on the other hand, the marrow is the thing that flows up the spine, the Chinese marrow at least, flows up the spine, you can say like um, cerebral spi uh, spinal fluid or something, up the spine and feeds the brain. The brain is supposed to be the sea of marrow, which again, you, so you're seeing the connection to neurological symptoms, to the nervous system, okay? So marrow and the nervous system conceivably have a, a, a fairly clear connection. Marrow and spine, and um, so marrow, brain, marrow, spine uh, are the two big things. And, and conceivably with anything to do with bone, you can conceivably, but, but um, primarily it's anything to, the, to do with the brain. So anything to do with the brain means anything to do with perception. Because at the end of the day, no matter, yeah, yes, your eyes are perceiving, but really it's your brain perceiving. So. If it, if it has to get to the marrow, so the marrow is going to do the interpretation. Therefore, marrow and pain are connected. Okay. So those will be the symptoms. Now, um, as far as the REN12, the REN12, this is something I can't speak well enough about because I um, there it's an interpretation of the character of Guan. And according to Kiko, there, there is a dictionary, there is some dictionary that claims that this character, Guan or Wan, it can be um, interpreted as um, the, the, the fat uh, inside a bone, that it's equivalent. I don't see that in the character in any way, shape or form. So, I, you know, but the thing is, no, no I mean, the point is that it, it clinically does prove itself to be correct that you know so for me less so in neurological issues and more so in um spinal issues so neck pain back pain kind of stuff the REN 12 area 10 11 12 13 can be very useful okay now you can say is it is it this marrow thing is it this um is it a connection between the ren and the do? I don't know. It, it really doesn't matter. So, so that's kind of what I would say. So, how big is marrow in in patients? I would say big enough because supplementing or supplementing or tapping into the, the marrow is going to give them a feeling of lightness, of ease, of strength, of durability. So those are important qualities. So, you know, you and, and because, and especially because in, in my uh, estimation, I see more and more people in general using more and more skull points, besides the fact that there are a bunch of scalp systems. I think it's hard to argue with, with, with the notion that these, the skull points are going to be marrow points. You know, not, not because of what the Ling Shu says, but because they're brain points. You know, that these systems are based on talking from the brain down to the body, you know, as opposed to talking from the body up, up towards the brain. So that since we're, 
there's definitely systems of acupuncture that use scalp only and since scalp in general seems to be very popular and even people who are don't do scalp but you know how many people you know you know it's kind of like, oh you know, they always do, do do 20 or something on patients you know just like some people always do yin tongue on patients like patients like demand it quite kind of thing um I, I would say it has a fairly central role even if it doesn't address the symptoms it addresses the perception so it allows for space for whatever else is going on to actually happen. So I think they're worthwhile. Um, there was a time um, when I, you know, cause I, I used do two a lot. Now I can, I can, so for example, I would claim, you know, but I can't substantiate it. I mean, I'm not an authority to, you know, it's not like, okay, now we're gonna say that do two is a marrow point, but since do two opens the, the whole spine, I'm I'm making the I can make the association or the claim that it's it's a marrow point and of course it affects the nervous system. So so there's often what I would do and it was a time when I was doing that a lot more. I would do do two and I would do whatever else I would do and at the end I I will um finish it fi finish it with do 16 with the idea of lengthening the neck away and opening the spine more. You know. So again that you can say that's related to marrow does that make sense yeah yeah so oh and by the way since we're talking about marrow so on the one hand i said well the the sear of marrow is supposed to be here because if the hat will if the cap was bigger it will include the, if you wanted to go down to the oxford it's going to cover pretty much down to your nose so it's going to be a thing that's going all around below your eyes so on the one hand i'm saying it's it's the top ones on the other hand in the back, just above the occiput, you have two brain points by name. Okay, do 17, and I think it's called bladder 19. Um, uh, now, shoe, and I, I can't remember the name of gallbladder gall 19, but um, but they're, they're both very clearly have to do with, you know, they have the, the character for brain in them. So I'm, I'm I guess, no, now, now, who, one is a door and one is, I can't remember what the other, the other one is. Um, but so, so there's some gauge to the brain in the occiput. And of course, uh, they're all just under the occiput, you have all the points that have to do with wind, meaning how wind uh, in movement enters the brain. I mean, yes, you can say external wind, you know, for TCM, that's fine, no, no big deal. But, and then you also have, you know, this area is known as, you know, th there's an extra point, you know, they specifically distinguish it from gallbladder 20 or UB10, you know, as anmien, the good sleep. And bladder 10 is, is called the, you know, something to do with a pillow, that it has, um, you know, it has a pillow that you can, the jade pillow, you know, like how you sleep. Um, so this this area of, under the occiput has a clear relationship to calming the brain, calming the nervous system. So you know, so even though the marrow officially is here, but do sixteen is still marrow, and do sixteen is clearly occiput. So you know, therefore you get this whole idea that the whole scalp basically is going to relate to the marrow. Is that helpful? Yes, it is. Yeah. I was just thinking there with the edge, you know, the way there's a kind of a suture or whatever you call it down the center of the skull. Would that be the edge of the? No, the, well, oh, well, I don't know. I, so, no, I think that talking about the edge of the cap, like, like, like a hat, like you're wearing okay. a hat. How big a hat? I mean, you know, because maybe you're wearing one of those big hats, like cowboy hats, and maybe your marrow points are outside your body. I don't know, but you know, so so they're not talking about just an edge. They're talking about the the edge of a, okay. you know, of a cap. Okay. Yeah. So it, it um the the word is guai guai. So um guai is, is um. I, I, I'd have to, you know, these are not, because I'm not a Chinese speaker, so it, I'd have to look it up. And I'm, I'm happy to look it up and, and figure it out for you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, 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 is, it is 
it does imply that it's not in the center. Okay. You know, but could it be because there are also sutures that that you know there's a suture in the center, but there's also sutures of the different um, lobes. So do do they suggest that some of those sutures are more powerful than others? Very possibly. Mm -hmm. um, but in my experience, actually, what generally what I'm looking for is a dent, and it's a it's it's a true dent as opposed to it's not a line that's a dent. It's like it's a hole. It's it's like a round hole. Those tend to be the ones that tend to be most effective. Yeah. You know, I don't find a lot. Of, personally, I haven't found a lot of bumps, for example, on the skull. Yeah, you know, there might be, but I. It's also so it might be just something that I've just gotten used to looking for a dent for for a hole, not a not a line. Um, and and I'm, I just gravitate to that, that maybe if I actually did look for the sutures, maybe I would find that that's, you know, even more effective. I, I don't know. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. That was a great question, uh, Mary Jo, and, and a, a, a superb answer. Thank you so much, Avi. Thank you. Um, since we're on the subject of do two, um, I, I, have several cases, including one in particular that that eludes me still, mm -hmm. um, of tension in the in the coccyx area. Um, that responds very well to direct needling of do two, um, but I'm wondering about generally uh, release areas for that. I see it a lot where the the coccyx turns and then and then some vertebrae in. Uh, a, a cervical vertebrae turns and then it leads to headaches and it it it, it it's not an unusual pattern and I was yeah. wondering if you could address the release of due to and 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 that that spinal relationship in particular so a few things that I would look into so okay so if it's if it really is the coccyx it's the actual tailbone shifting I would start with the following now, and, and it's dogmatic, but you know, I'll, I'll start, I would start there. UB66 is an option. Uh, lung 8 is an option. And mm. C71 Watteau is an option. Okay, any one okay. of those, I would start with that, especially if you're actually putting your hand um, this is the one place I palpate with with clothes on. You put your hand on, on the tailbone and go under and and on or on the side of the tailbone and you press and there's pain, you can check those three points and see if they help. Mm -hmm. Now, so that's to start off with to take some of that away. Then other things that can happen. So um you know, I so that, there are these master tongue points that are called correct tendons, which is basically kidney seven and kidney three, but take them on the Achilles heel, on the Achilles tendon. But I call correct tendons the whole area from, and I don't just mean the Achille, the, the center line, but it can go to the gallbladder, the, the bladder channel, as well as the gallbladder channel, that whole section, all the way conceivably up to just about go, behind gallbladder 34. That can do the trick. Now, especially in this case, it will, it's more likely to do the trick when they have this, this cervical correlation. Okay. Because correct tendons is actually for the neck. That, that those points are like, you know, master tongue specialty for, for neck. Um, and I would say this, that needling those, those, those two points, the actual ones on the Achilles, not my favorite thing to do. I have done it, but generally I would, I would use something else, um, in that, in that whole area. I have used those particular two points at the exact points as per tongue. Um, but well, and I can, I can use a number one needle on it. You know, it's, it's, it can work. Um, but generally speaking, you kind of want a thicker needle. I mean, it, it just becomes not my style, so to, so to speak. Um, you know, because the it, it's not the most, it's not the easiest place to needle. Um, you know, so so that's why I tend to. That's why I have like my my sort of more lateral and possibly quite a bit further up 
kind of points. The other thing is anything along the spine, and that means primarily look for T11, T12, and T5 T to T7, which are the other big curves in the spine, which means that they're going to be transmitting along the spine. The, the vibration from, from the greatest curve, the greatest shift in a curve, is going to be, um, you're going to get more bang for your buck sort of thing. So possibly I would look at T11, T12, and T5, and strangely enough, for me personally, do 4 L2 is supposed to be one of those. It's supposed to be the height, just like T5 is the height of the kyphotic curve. L2 is the height or the depth of the lordotic curve. Somehow I don't have good... Um, good resonance or good results with with l2 i have i have much better results with needling ub52 in towards the spine mm. so for whatever reason either for me uniquely for me or whatever you know just the way i see things that area is much more muscularly um oriented of course, you have tight muscles in the rhomboids around T5 and T7. Yes, yes, you do. But I don't seem to get much effect from me. I personally don't get much effect from, from the actual spinal area. And I get much better effect from going on, the, you know, doing something on the muscles. Um, I, you know, it, it's it's something to contemplate and to look at, you know, what and why. But um but but i'm just saying that's what it is for me so officially since i'm saying the height of the curves or the changes of the curves that should include l2 but somehow it doesn't for, for me um and then your other option is to try and release the neck and then depending on which vertebrae of the neck it is but one of the things so you can you know generally to release the neck maybe sanjo eight would work and the other thing is stomach nine might work and then you could but the thing about stomach sanjo eight you can do with them lying on the on the front you, there's no way you're going to be able to fi figure out st stomach eight against the tailbone you can figure out stomach uh, stomach nine sorry stomach nine you can figure out against the neck but you can't figure out stomach nine against the tailbone you know, because it's rare that a person with a tailbone that you can pul palpate the tailbone and create pain palping from underneath. Usually it's it's much easier when they're lying stomach down. Now, you could have them lying on the side and check the tailbone and check stomach stomach. Line. That, that that's a little bit more um, possible, but to go when they're lying face up to try and palpate the tailbone is is in my experience very very difficult. And the last thing I would say is make sure the sacroiliac ligaments and L5, um, the L5 is aligned, and which means you want the sacroiliac ligaments, um, you know. Um, De dealt with, meaning they're usually once, at least one side is going to be too tight because that's actually much more likely to pull things than anything else in the area. I mean, the tailbone itself, yeah, I mean, there are things that are holding the tailbone, then you're talking about, you know, incredibly minute um, ligaments and muscles that, you know, that, well, I certainly don't even know the names. Uh, I mean, I know that there are people who that's their specialty. And if you want to go that route, I would suggest inner yin, you know, liver nine area yeah. on the kidney channel, because that has a, the strongest effect of everything on the um, perineal floor. And the other helper for that, so then you have, you can try something on the kidney channel, either kidney six or kidney seven. And then you can try taking side gallbladder 27, which is basically level with REN4, go all the way to the side to, to give the, the, the whole perineal floor a better support. So you maybe then the tailbone adjusts well. But I, I don't know enough about the different um, muscles that hold the tail, that, that have something to do with the tailbone alignment. Um, you know within the because it is kind of part of the, the the perineal floor but you know i i would the first thing i would look 
for is the sacroiliac ligaments because if L5 is is um, I don't know, torqued or twisted or something, the, the tailbone is much more likely to shift. If L5 is is more solid, that tailbone is gonna is, is gonna have a little less of an impact because at the end of the day, the tailbone is gonna have the impact through up through L5 and the first place that I mean if you think if I'm thinking about it so the tailbone's doing something to the sacrum which is why I want to do the sacral ligament the rest of it comes from the fact that it shifts from a much more solid area of the sacrum and it shifts to the spine that's a huge shift from the sacrum to L5 that's a that's a very big um momentum capacity does that make sense yeah. So, Camille? Okay. Yes, it, that's a really good discussion. Thank you so kindly. Yes, very, so, there are some the very end, helpful pieces yeah. there. So, at the end, you can actually needle L5, you know, the, the wattos of L5 and needle them down and out, literally towards the, the, towards the sacrum and slightly out towards the leg, kind of to help stabilize it. So, you know, um, so, so see, you know, see how that goes. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you, you know, very much. And I, I just had a note on um, from the last thing. So um, I was thinking one of the things that you, you see is, I mean, I know people love do 20, but actually if I'm going to do it, I'm, I actually love to do 23 and do 24 much more. Um, and the other thing is do 23 and do 24 seem to have a, a clear effect on REN12. Uh, and digestion. So again, you're seeing some sort of component of these so-called marrow points and another point that, that is claimed to have a, an effect on marrow REN12. So I, I just realized that, you know, there, there's another kind of weird connection within within that, within this concept. Yeah. Are you generally speaking, I mean, when you talk about tailbone shift, are you generally speaking like a move to the right or the left you're not talking about like turning in and you know turning down and turning up <laughs> yeah to me that's actually that, that's just it yeah i mean it's just as calm because it's sometimes the amount it moves to the right for my you know everyone sees different people so some people might say oh yeah i see it all the time moving to the right to the left oh yeah well, you know it swings i personally i mean i know it exists i i see a lot more it curves under or it sticks out you know i see a lot more of that now part of it might be that my ability to evaluate how far to the left or to the right it goes maybe i don't i i just don't have the sensitivity you know you also have to remember that it's not an area that um i mean given where it's where it is it's not an area where I'm going to spend a lot of time checking, like how many millimeters to the right. You know, it's like you do what you can there, because you know most patients are not exactly thrilled. You know, even though you're doing it over their underwear, but it's it's not you know like even in the abdomen you can get a lot more. You can take a lot more time in most other areas of the body. This is an area you go. You just do what you know. You get what you need to get out of it. And and fix what you you can. I mean, you you don't have a choice. You have to you have to. And but you want the patient to have a clear understanding of why you're there. You know, if you're palpating the neck and the patient doesn't understand why 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 you're obsessing with their neck, or the eyebrows, or you know, or the abdomen, or what, fine. <laughs> you know, it's like they don't understand. They don't understand. Eventually, hopefully, they do. But you're going into areas that are a little bit harder to you know, are harder for, for people to be touched at. It's like, do what you can <laughs> and let, let the x-ray tell you if it's shifted to the right or the left. I mean, let, it really doesn't matter, um, you know. But I, in my experience, when I'm thinking of tailbone shift, I tend to think of it uh, more up and down rather than sideways, but it doesn't mean that that's necessarily true for most people. Any, any, of, it, any of it is going to affect the rest of the spine because it um on the one hand it's an appendage on the other hand it's what grounds even though it's the sacrum that grounds but at the same time it's like you know it's like the tail that wags the dog kind of thing kind of the 
it's the exact metaphor it's not even it's not even a metaphor but the tailbone even though it's it can create subtle weird shifts into the sacrum and therefore into the into the whole lower abdominal cavity and in, in throughout the whole spine so so it affects certainly affects the nervous system through the spine but it can actually affect the whole um, hollow of the lower of the perineal floor which then affects everything else so it, it's it's actually it can be not always um, I mean, lots of people, you know, they fell off horses, they fell off skating, they, you know, nothing, it doesn't matter, you know, there's nothing on the tail. But for, there are people for whom the tailbone is like incredibly central um, to who they are, you know, health-wise. And I I haven't done it myself, but I know people who have, have experienced it. I, I don't know anybody who actually does it. Um, but there are chiropractors who do adjustments on the tailbone through the anus, through the rectum. Um, so that's, you know, there's, I mean, let's be honest, it's not, it, nobody would have invented it um, unless it was, you know, clearly worthwhile. You know, because most patients are not gonna say, oh yeah, yeah, please, you know, I would like to have the rectal adjustment today. You know, it's, it's not this kind of thing that people, you know, fall for so easily. So it's clear, and people say it makes a huge difference. I, I it, again, I, I haven't done, I haven't had it done on me, so I can't say. But from what people say, describe it, it makes a huge shift for them. So. Camille, what, what do you, what is your perspective of right to left versus front, front and back? Uh, well, I, I'm just thinking about myself because my mine kind of curls up, I think. <laughs> curls you know I was just wondering when you say shift like do you mean it actually going I, well, Camille may have had that's why I was asking Camille I Camille may, may have had a totally different um um connotation for the shift um so a shift for me is anything you know back front side sideways you know anything there's a there's a 360 degree option for it to, to go um in whatever direction um yeah so. well the the two cases in particular um one of them is me mm -hmm. and it happened when my friend was joking around and stepped on my uh sacrum and it destabilized and then for years and years and years i had a pattern where the tailbone would shift to the left. And then what I said was C3 shifted to the left mm -hmm. and then I would get a migraine. And that happened for 15 years. And then recently I started seeing someone um, to try to resolve the accident I had last year when I hit the boulder. I'm very accident prone apparently. Um, but but what was interesting was that when I was explaining this to him, he said, no, it couldn't possibly be C3. The sacrum maps to C4. And in two sessions, he fixed a 15 year problem. Mm. Yeah. So that was very impressive. And I see him again on Wednesday. So I, I have to learn more about this mind map that he has. But he's actually the person that's going to fill in for me for three weeks. Oh, cool. um, um, but the other thing is, is that I have a patient um, who has all kinds of headaches, all kinds of hormonal problems, never knows if her headache is hormonal or allergies. And, and the best thing, I can't even do any needles in her head because it'll trigger a headache. And the very, very best treatment that I've ever found for her is to take a, a 60 millimeter needle and put it into D2 and, and UB36 and just like release the heck out of the, out of the tailbone. And that abates her symptoms for a while. Um, but then UB it ultimately 30, sorry, comes UB30, back. UB35 or UB36? Oh, I'm sorry, 35. 35 okay. yeah yeah because they, so, they would she, you know suggest just something all totally i can different. do whether it's from from manual manipulation or from needles anything i can do to just 
free up and move the yeah. tailbone. But, but, you know, two or three weeks later, you know, it all starts again. So that's why, uh, you know, for her on her behalf, um, I was, I was kind of looking for, you know, maybe some new ideas and, and also, you know, just curious. I don't know if the C3 versus C4, I just found that to be such an interesting comment. Um, and I, and I don't have a handle on, on why he said, oh, oh no, no, it couldn't possibly be C3. Well, I don't, I, obviously, well, okay. I, I don't have this expertise. Um, so I, I can't say that. I also think that, you know, well, people get a little bit stuck on, you know, this is the dogma, but, you know, okay, how, how can you really tell the difference exactly between C3 and C4? So the idea is, I, I'll tell you what I think might be going on um, and take this with a grain of salt. Um, or a pile of salt, however much salt you want to put on it. You know, but a pillar of salt. Any a pillar. A pillar is even better. Yes, just a, a there's a jade pillar and a salt pillar. <laughs> no, um, actually that was a pillow, not a pillar. But anyway, um, because but no, no, but um, there is a point next. You know, uh, do twelve is called the body pillow. Um, so anyway, um, the thing about the, I think. What what my, again? I think it has to do with it, with the different obstacles along the way. So, like L five is going to be a big oomph, and then next place, another place that there's going to be a big um, amplification of things is the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is innervated from C four. Okay. Oh. So I think that's why, you know, I, I don't know, but it's possible that in some system and, and, and that therefore people are saying, oh, tailbone and C4. It's like, okay, yeah, but how do, you know, so I don't think he means like that mechanically the vibration can only reach C4 and it cannot reach C3. I, I, I don't know. It would be worth asking him. Um, but that's the association that's being made for me with C4 rather than C3 is that maybe it's because of the way the diaphragm is affecting the vibration um, and therefore it's going to show on C4. Well, and that's very interesting because when I did have the accident last year, um, which was the main reason I sought him out because mm -hmm. my spine has been rigid ever since and my whole rib cage was, was failing to articulate around the spine. And that was the focal point of the pain was right at uh, um, uh, was at the base of the rib cage, um, um, at, uh, you know, uh, where it articulates with the spine. So kind of like T12. Mm -hmm. So so, you know, and of course, that really relates to diaphragm very well. So so that was just so rigid. And I saw so many people trying to release that. And then, boom, you know, it's just it's just all better. Cool. And, um, and I've had a couple of times where something happened that would normally trigger that, that tailbone shift and the tailbone shift didn't happen. So I'm extremely encouraged that he's taken care of both problems. Great. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's very cool. So, now as for your, the patient, what I would do is because the tailbone is so important for her and because there's a possible, so the fact that do two worked for her suggests that the, the 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 migraines have to do with that they have to do with the nervous system because do two primarily is a nervous system point. Okay, it opens it opens up the nervous system. However, uh, so you can try and do other things like is it possible that say under the third toe would work for her? Mm. You know, it, it's That's just interesting. You know, okay. Yeah, like, but the the actual closer correlation that that to do two is remember we talked about UB sixty six to release do do two, um or rather to release the tailbone below do two, um and then UB sixty six is a hormonal point. So uh -huh. you know, so it's right. it's something that's worth kind of like looking at, um, as you know, this is the thing like how much can I milk from each idea. And, you know, the, the more stuff that I can milk out of it, the more likely I am to, to even to, to make that my first, the first thing I experiment with that I try out. If it doesn't work, okay, so I, I went the wrong path. No, no big deal. There's other things to do. 
Um, but, you know, so that would suggest to me that, oh, maybe she actually is hormonal. The other thing is then, you know, so from UB66 now I'm coming to, okay, you know, UB66 and small intestine 3 are basically kind of like the mirror each other, right? And, um, and small intestine 3 is supposed to open the do. Now, if her migraines are more at the top, I mean, I don't know where her migraines are, but small, so when they say small intestine 3 opens the do, in some ways, I think that's not totally correct. Sorry, I don't want to argue with a, with a history of whatever, however, hundreds of years. But I think they really mean from the neck upwards. And if you look at like the, um, the more traditional, um, the TCMs types, you know, if they want to do something for the back and with, with the TCMs types, I'm actually including the dong types, they will go for small intestine four for the low back not small oh. intestine three they go for small intestine three for the neck and they go for small intestine four for the low back it seems and so small intestine two and small intestine three mirror by name they have a before and after one is before the ravine is small intestine two and after the um who she um before okay it's before the valley and after the ravine Okay, so that's small intestine two and three, whereas do 19 and 21 are before and after the vertex. So, and these are the only before and afters that we have. Mm. Okay, in, in, so there's four, well, there's actually two of each, two before and two, two, two afters. So there is no other point with before and after, either before or an after. So th there's a clear correlation between small intestine three and the do 20 area. Okay. Therefore, also strong correlation between small intestine three, not exactly to hormones, but to pituitary, which lies underneath do 20. Uh -huh. you, know, you know, there's no point that you can say needles the pituitary, you know, I mean, that corresponds directly, but, you know, there'll be, you know, maybe, you know, UB, UB1 will be on the front, 20 will be at the top and maybe something in the back, you know, um, maybe do um do 17 or you know might be the in the back so um so it might be something that you know again you know so so you just take this again you take this with a grain of salt and you experiment okay what would ub66 and small intestine 3 do for her and see what it does and especially for you since you have other tools to to evaluate you already know what you want to evaluate is is a is some sort of shift in the in the way the the tailbone is, which I'm assuming you can feel manually, not just with mm -hmm. pain. Yeah, and you know you can put it, you can either touch or or needle small intestine three UB sixty six or just UB six whatever, and and say to yourself, okay, what what's the what's the what's the cranial current here? Whether you know what, what's improving here or what's not. And if it's not, these points are useless. But if it is, oh, wow, well, you know, these points are actually useful. So it doesn't have to necessarily be, okay, yes, and your abdomen is better. It's whatever the tool is. So, you know, you, you, you just, by doing these sort of leaping around different points with the connections, you just get different ideas to test. That's, that's all. Super. Thank you so much. Excellent. No problem. In six weeks, you'll be able to try it out. <laughs> After. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Oh, I didn't do anything. I was happy. <clears throat> that was a lovely discussion. Thank mm -hmm. you. I enjoyed it tremendously. <laughs>